I'm Mali Cecere and welcome to the special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV. After final tests have taken place, the Sentinel-3A satellite will be shipped from Thales Alenia Space in Cannes to Plesetsk, Russia, to be prepared for launch. Recently, we got the chance to see the satellite in the clean room and meet some of the key players in the Sentinel-3 mission. I learned about its payload and applications and shared some of the emotions involved. Let's go take a look. I am here today at Thales Alenia Space in Cannes and with me are Thales Alenia's project manager Ivan Bayon and ESA Sentinel-3 project manager Bruno Berruti. Let me start with a question for you, Bruno. What is the main task of a project manager for a satellite mission at ESA? Well, project manager has a responsibility to develop the mission within a certain allocated uh, budget and schedule. Uh, developing the mission is not only building the satellite, but is also providing uh, the uh, associated services like the launch service, uh, the uh, system to operate the satellite at all, and the payload uh, data system which will assess the data once the satellite will be flying. The work of the project manager will also evolve during the time, and I would say that we can identify three phases. The first phase is the very beginning of the program where the project manager has the important uh, responsibility to set together what are the requirements against which the satellite will be developed and to help uh, the prime contractor to set up the consortium that will do the job. Uh, later on, the second phase, which is the longest one, is the real development phase, is when the satellite is really built, put together and tested. And in that phase, it is uh, extremely important uh, to be able to work together with industry to try to smooth whatever issue is uh, raised to make sure that the final product is fulfilling the objective. And then we get to the launch and the project, uh, project manager job is not yet finished because we are still in charge until what we call IOCR, which is the in-orbit commission review, which is a, a review a few months after the launch where we can really tell to people the satellite is performing as we wanted. So during the period between the launch and this review, which for Sentinel-3 is five months, we are going to make all the validation in flight of the satellite and demonstrate that everything is working well, performance are okay. At that moment, my job, the job project manager is completed. We end over to the mission manager, which is taking then the satellite and operating it then for the remaining of the life. Okay, thank you. And Ivan, may I then ask you, as the Thales Alenia project manager, what have you been responsible for throughout the process of designing and building of Sentinel-3? So at Thales Alenia Space, we were responsible of the satellite and of the algorithm of the um, for processing the data, the first level of algorithm. Our role first was to build and to lead the industrial team. So this was a long process, well-controlled process in agreement with ISA to select more than 120 members, so a very big consortium. This consortium um, was in the first phase there to design the satellite, to consolidate the design and to demonstrate to the agency that this design on the paper will meet the requirement expressed by the agency. Once this is done and validated, start the phase, as mentioned by Bruno, of the development, so manufacturing of each element of the satellite. So you imagine 120 members building each a part of the satellite, testing, demonstrating that their parts are working properly and answering to the requirements. And then start the assembly of instruments, of platform, and at the end of the satellite, and for each phase, we have a very long series of tests to demonstrate that the satellite will survive to the launch and will perform well in orbit to answer the uh, ESA requirement and the user need. And my role as project manager, first is to interface with the agency to represent the, uh, the industrial consortium and then to lead the team, to be the orchestra conductor, I would say. Okay. And what were your biggest challenges along the way? challenges, many challenges. You have, of course, technical challenges on, on such a, a multi-instrument satellite. This is clear. Uh, this, we have technological uh, problem. We have a uh, testing problem. But most probably, the biggest challenge is to manage such a team. Uh, human resources, you have more than uh, perhaps 500 people working on this project over Europe with different culture. And, uh, okay. To make this project possible and successful at the end, you, make, you shall make all people 
align on the same objective, to have the satellite in orbit, answering to the uh, user need. Absolutely. And did you work on the satellite all the time here in, in, in Cannes? And if so, in this clean room? So the satellite team, engineering team, was in Cannes since the beginning. But the satellite assembly was done here in Cannes, but during the last uh, two years. Before, all over Europe, all the elements were assembled, as I mentioned before. So this means the instrument, for instance, the altimeter instrument was built in Toulouse, in Thales Aina Space in Toulouse. The uh, sea and land surface temperature instrument was built in Firenze, in Italy. The microwave radiometer was built in Madrid, in Airbus Casa Espacio. And the uh, ocean and land surface, uh, surface uh, uh, ocean color instrument, sorry, was built here in Cannes, in another, another building room, uh, clean room. Um, and then the assembly here in Cannes in the last two years. Okay, now back to you, Bruno. Mm. I understand that you've been working on Sentinel-3 for seven years now. So how does it feel to know that you will soon be separating from your baby? Well, it's a strange feeling. I was uh, thinking uh, a few days ago that uh, I feel a bit like two years ago when my daughter decided to leave home and to go uh, living on her own. And here is a bit the same. In fact, I started on the satellite many years ago, even before the development to prepare it. In all this phase, uh, I saw it uh, starting from a piece of paper, a lot of paper, and becoming gradually a, 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 a nice uh, integrated satellite. So, certainly the first uh, feeling for this is I'm proud of it, I'm happy about it, and I look forward to getting him uh, uh, on his own, flying and doing what he's supposed to do. Nevertheless, there is always, at the moment of a, of a separation, some fear as well. Uh, fear that something unexpected can go wrong. Uh, as you all know, the launch is a very critical phase. After all this year of development, you put the satellite on top of a rocket, and in a few minutes, uh, things can go differently from expected. When finally will be in the orbit, and you will put on, and you will start getting data, the big question is, are we getting what we're expecting? Is it working with him as we simulated on ground? So there is always a little bit of fear. Uh, but all in all, it's clear, uh, we are looking forward to this. I mean, you work so hard, everybody, as, as Yvonne said, we have big consortium, a lot of people are looking forward to it, we are counting days, and uh, we are really proud to, to, to get the satellite uh, finally delivering to users what they are expecting for. Absolutely. Now, why is Sentinel-3 being launched from Russia, rather than French Guiana like Sentinel-2A? Yeah, this is back to the way the two programs have been uh, developed. Sentinel-2 and Sentinel-3 development started uh, the same moment, uh, in fact, the same date in 2007, and the two satellites are the same class of satellite using the same class of launcher. So from the beginning, we always saw the selection of the launcher as a possible risk uh, area. As you know, the same launcher cannot launch more times uh, uh, immediately after each, uh, each other. So. Uh, in our case, uh, both uh, Sentinel-2 and Sentinel-3 were put to launch on Rokot and Avega. And at a certain point in time, because the two development programs were so close to each other, it was decided to make a kind of cross, uh, let's say, uh, launch uh, planning. So the first one, Vega, um, Sentinel-2 was on Vega, Sentinel-3 on Rokot. The next one will be the other way around. By doing that, we decouple completely the two launch campaign and launch schedule, and we mitigate any, any possible risk to influence each other. Okay, very interesting. And what have been the most rewarding aspects of developing this mission? Well, I think that... Um, Certainly, at the very beginning, uh, was, uh, we, we, I had to face uh, a big, uh, uh, some difficult moment in trying to combine the needs of a different community. As you know, Sentinel-3 is not a single instrument mission, but is a multi-instrument mission. And we are trying to combine uh, the need of a uh, optical community with the need of a altimetry community which are not precisely the same. Each one of them is coming with certain requirements in terms of orbit, in terms of sun uh, illumination, in terms of uh, uh, revisit time and, uh, and, and so on. So putting together these two uh, type of family of user requirement and find a satellite design which can combine both of them in a satisfactory way was a challenge. It took us some time. And I think that uh, finally we achieved it and this was definitely quite a, a big achievement. The second point is that uh, Sentinel-3 is built largely on a continuity of the Envisat mission. And Envisat mission has been excellent. 
has been lasted as twice as originally planned. Uh, all data user were absolutely delighted by your results, and now they look to us. So the expectation uh, they put into Sentinel-3 has been even increasing in time, and this is, we felt as well, this. I would say as a positive pressure. I mean, we have to demonstrate that ESA can do an equally successful uh, satellite with even better performance. And this definitely is something now we are looking forward to demonstrate. And we are really looking uh, to, the, to the launch and to the moment when the first data will uh, come uh, back to ground from uh, the flight. And we hope this will be excellent as well. Thank you very much, Bruno. You're welcome. And thank you very much, Ivan, from Thales Alenia Space in Cannes. Goodbye.